what is up, friends, Romans, countrymen, wherever you are in the world. It is time for Expert Momentum. We are here 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. If you're watching this from Australia, it's the morning. If you're watching this from the other side of the world, it's the middle of the night. And if you're with me in the middle of the night, I want to give a shout out to you for making it happen because my friend, you are dedicated you know what it takes to be successful and you're up in the middle of the night or maybe you just had the munchies and you're like getting the Facebook Live notification and you're like, all right, I understand. I need to know right now how to create an event funnel. So Ken Kors here with Expert Momentum, the show that helps you be a better speaker, a better expert, get some insights into how you turn your mouth into money and how you become a better expert. And for those of you who haven't watched this before, I've been doing this as part of a great series in Amy Carrier's classroom, which will continue. And I've sent out, if you're not part of the Your Momentum Now community, the Facebook group, make sure you join because I posted the previous episodes there as well. They're on the YouTube channel as well if you want to get those. And I'm working on how I'm going to bring those to the Facebook channel as well. Um, but I do this every week where I bring you the type of education you would generally pay for somewhere else. And this is education that I know myself that I have have delivered in rooms that people paid as much as fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to sit in, especially this one because it's oft confused, it's oft a problem. These days, you have people telling you you do need it, you don't need it, you don't want funnels. Funnels are like the modern day marketing snake oil. It's enough to drive you crazy. It'll drive you crazy, kids. Do you need a funnel or not? And so I'm going to break down, first of all, some of the stigma around funnels a little bit and talk about that. And then I'm going to walk you through my process. And specifically what we're talking about is event funnels. So this can doesn't matter whether it's a live uh, event or it's an in-person event. Uh, pardon me, not just live event. If it's an in-person event or it's an online event, you can use the same tactics for both. And as always during the show, I have a zillion chat windows open. Um, this is broadcast live all over my world. So please ask questions, leave comments. I know that I talk fast all the time, which is something that commonly comes up when I do these episodes. I do my best to slow down. Julia, who watches this almost every week, is like, Ken, take a breath, my friend. Friend, and I'm like, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for breaths. I got content. I got an hour of action packed stuff that's coming out here to make sure that you get the most out of what you can do. And I'm actually refreshing right now because I see you have a comment, but it doesn't pop up. It's great education. Thanks, Julia. I appreciate that. Julia is a fellow Amy Carrier's classroom educator with me where I've been delivering these the past few weeks and just preparing them for how I'm going to bring them into your momentum now and into the world. But this week, as I said, we're talking about event funnels and what that means. I'm going to go into definitions of funnels. I want you to ask questions as always. This is way more fun when you're interactive, especially for those of you who I was joking, it's in the middle of the night for you and you're watching this at three in the morning from South Africa or wherever you are in the world where it's the middle of the night. Oh, I have more comments coming out. Let me see. <laughs> I don't know what this three in the morning thing is. Mary Francis says, I love when you speak fast. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate the love for speaking fast. Julia breathes for me. I appreciate that as well. Someone needs to lend me your breath when we get deep into event funnels. And so let's talk about it. For those of you who have never seen this before, you got bamboozled into being here. Someone tricked you. They're like, you got to hear somebody talk about event funnels. And you're like, I don't even know what events funnels are, let alone who this guy is here. here I'm going to do a cool thing where I put myself over my own face. So this is the real me. I It doesn't fit the body. Like even if I adjust, it doesn't work. My name's Ken Course. I have been in the speaking and expert industry for a very long time. I have generated with teams over $50 million of revenue in a variety of different industries. So really, why do I brag about all this crap? Because I want you to understand my experience in the industry, my position in the industry, why I talk about this stuff. And for the most part, I try to keep it from being solidly theory. And especially since I know a couple of you are watching right now, if you have a sample event you want me to use as we build out this funnel a little bit, please um, go ahead and feel free. I didn't really prepare for that, but I 
don't need to prepare for that because I've been doing this for a long time, <laughs> as you can see by the slide on the screen. So if you want me to work your event and you're happening to be here watching live, especially the middle of the night people, tell me what type of event it is or give me a title for the event and I will use that and make some stuff up during today's session, which can be even more fun. But I've been doing this a long time. I like to focus on the speaking and expert industry, but I have worked and done marketing, fundraising, sales, systems, management, and small business training, nonprofit, personal development workshops, executive coaching, information technology, nutritional products, real estate. I've been all over the map with this kind of stuff, but just to tell you, this is why you should listen to what I have to say about this stuff. And so I also talk fast. I always have this slide on here. So put away your cell phones, put away your crying babies. Try not to scroll around too much on Facebook because you'll go back and you'll be like, what did Ken say? Because I blast through content like a Star Trek phaser. I didn't have a joke prepared for that. That's what you get. So this episode's part of a series. I brought that up as well. The last two episodes, as Julia can attest, because she watches this every week, the last two episodes, I went really into depth um, on preview events. So this is part of a series where I'm talking about your initial event or your preview event. That's the first thing that you do. So the first episode, really, I talked about what are all the things that you need to have in place so that you know what to say and you know what to do for your preview event? Last week, I talked about the marketing side of it, which is how do you get people to attend your event, whether it's online or whether it's in person. And then from there, I also then... Did I disable my microphone on my screen capture? Hold on. You lost sound for a second. I said I was dropping knowledge bombs as I was reading through the comments, but let me fix this real quick because I must have taken my microphone out of there. What did I do? Hold on. Let me see. Does it come back? Do, do, do. I'm still showing myself as sending sound. How about now? Just giving me, give me the all clear that we got sound at this point. For whatever reason, when I switched to just screen capture, it turned my sound off. Must have muted myself by accident. I'm seeing I'm sending volume now, so I think we're good. Sorry about that. Don't know what, what happened there. I should be back, though. I'm just giving the all clear. Give me, like, two seconds. Give me the all clear. We got sound again. We're back. Okay, cool. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. So, as I was saying really quickly, this is part of a series. If you have time to go back and watch the previous episodes. It will really help you figure out what do you say at your preview event? How do you put people in your preview event? Whether again, whether it's online or offline. And again, as, as Julia was saying, I was reading the comments, dropping knowledge bombs last week, a lot to cover when we're talking about preview events, because a preview event is basically the most lucrative thing you can do in your business. If you're gonna be in the speaker or expert business, these are the things that you want to know and that you wanna understand how to do as you're going forward. So. Let's talk about this. What is a funnel? Because this is a term, and I know for those of you out there, you may be tired of this information, but I'm gonna present this information in a way that you have never heard before. What is a funnel? So this is a funnel, my friends. You've probably seen it. What does a funnel do? You put oil in your car or other important fluids. You pour milk back into the container, but seriously, who does this? Like if you're having a bowl of cereal and you pour your milk back into the container, I don't know that we can be friends. I don't know that you should watch this episode of this. Fitting large amounts of things into small spaces. Perhaps that's what you need to do with your funnel. Plus, there are disposable funnels. So you don't even have to buy a funnel that sticks around forever. Ha ha. Puns. Bad jokes. I can't help myself that I have to do it. You've never heard that definition of funnel before. Oh, of course you have. But again, funnels these days, <laughs> most people have heard of them. 
Most people understand what a funnel is. In this, I'm mentioning an event funnel, which is a specific thing. And I'm gonna give my definition of a funnel because again, as I said, for whatever reason, like funnels have become the snake oil of marketing. Like sometimes just like I even see a viewer drop when I mention the word funnel, they're like, oh my God, here we go into that funnel stuff again. But I wanna clearly give you my clearly defined definition, especially of what an event funnel is and when funnels are useful and how to use them and why you need them. Cause people will tell you, you don't need them. You do need them. Some people will recommend that you have really crazy complex funnels, which you don't necessarily need at this point. I know you've never heard that definition. Julia boos me, boo this man. I don't have a soundboard up like I used to have on podcasts. Boo this man. But, you know, it is it is what it is, my friend. So definition of an event funnel is really to say what I want you to get out of this process or out of this session today is to understand that an event funnel is automated process that you can use to get better results out of your event. That's what it's for. So this might mean getting more people to come to your event. This might get mean getting more people that are registered for your event to actually show up to your event. This might mean after the event that you get more people to take advantage of your next step or take advantage of your next offer. So an event funnel can include all of those things or it can just be one piece of those things. I'm gonna talk about a big picture version of an event funnel today, which is really gonna cover a lot of different aspects, but an event funnel can really be any of those things. And a goal, and so I put it here as one of my golden tips. I always give these on expert momentum. These are the things that you should write down, print the slide, my face is on it. Let me shrink my head a little bit here. We'll shrink my, we'll shrink my face a little bit so that you can see that a little better. Oops. There we go. I can shrink me, there we go. So an event funnel, it's an automated process to fill your next event is really what I'm gonna focus on right here. But as I mentioned, you can use it for various processes that will help you, that will help improve the overall results of your event as well. So as you start to put these things in place, it just makes your event more successful. And again, this works for online, in-person, doesn't matter where you're doing this event, it's gonna help you in any of those spaces. The other problem though, is that a funnel doesn't necessarily replace your marketing or your sales efforts. You can automate pieces of those and those can be part of your funnel. But when you think about the diagram of the funnel that I showed you before, you know, the really fancy plastic one that I pulled off of Google, that a funnel is, there's gotta be an entry point. There's gotta be people coming into the funnel, which I'm gonna talk about again in a second since for those of you who might've missed last week, but it doesn't replace your marketing and sales efforts. So doing the hard work to automate pieces of your process or to build campaigns or to build landing pages or to write the copy or to do all of those things, at the end of the day, it doesn't replace marketing and sales. And marketing and sales requires diverse energy and diverse attention. So your automated process can support that but it's not necessarily going to replace that. So I know too many people that get confused when they talk about funnels because they go, oh, well, the funnel is taking care of all of my marketing stuff. When in reality, the funnel is generally coming after your marketing stuff or your marketing efforts. Um, it can be the entry point to it, but it's at the top. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today. And so... I, and this is the definition I really want you to write down. I know I've given a couple of them, but this is the definition that of when I'm talking about event funnel today, it's the process of automating decisions in your customer journey. So I'm actually gonna describe what that customer journey is for an event. And that again, can be online, in person, doesn't matter. But really our goal is to automate decisions and help them move through their journey and, and this is a really important distinction when we talk about the various phases of a customer journey to get to an event. And so it's important to understand each of these phases and where automation can be a critical piece. And so I mentioned these on the last episode for those of you who might've missed it, but don't put all your eggs in one basket and don't assume that once you've built your funnel, that that's it, that the work is over. Cause a lot of people go, oh, it's so much work to get these things done or write the copy or get the graphics or do the videos or do all that stuff. But you can't put all your eggs in one basket you don't want to you don't want to send roll all your eggs down one funnel even if the funnel is big enough to do that you want to make sure that you're diverse in what you're doing and then I mentioned this last week and for, for the marketing piece, which again, there's a whole hour that you can go through where I talk about this piece. There are really only three ways that you can, that you can get people into your event. You either promote it yourself, you partner with other people so you get in front of their audiences, or you pay. 
That's the only way that you do it. So you have to pick your lane. And ideally, when I start drawing, when I start mapping a funnel today, I'm going to show that in a perfect world, you're going to have one or two of each of these. So you will have one or two ways that you promote, one or two ways that you partner, or one or two ways that you pay. When you're starting off, you might be more heavily leveraged in the promote or the pay to get started. But these are the only three ways that you get new that you get in front of new people. You promote yourself, you partner with others, or you pay. Now over time, in a successful and scalable business, there will be a lot more partnering and paying so that you're trading less time for people in seats, but you don't ever wanna get rid of any one of these and you don't wanna be over leveraged in one. Like I know too many people that they only promote and that's the only way that they get people into their process. And that's a great way to burn yourself out or to create a rough event from time to time where you're not diverse enough in your promotional efforts to be able to get people into the funnel, which I'll show examples of how that happens today. Um, so let's talk about stages of the event funnel process because these are really the stages. I know there's a lot of bullets here and I'm going to break these down into simple statements instead of uh, you know, forcing you into like a systems conversation. But you'll notice that these are really similar to marketing anything else. Now, since I'm focused on the expert business, I will talk about marketing a lot because obviously I have a marketing agency and marketing is something that I do. But this looks a lot like anything that you're marketing. But for an event in particular, these are the phases of an event process. So there's curiosity, there's discovery, there's negotiation, there's decision, there's confirmation, attendance, and post event. And I think the most neglected pieces of an event process are that confirmation process and that negotiation process. These are the two places where, pro where automation and decision automation really can make a huge difference because most people don't put enough attention onto the negotiation phase and don't people most people don't even confirm at all or they confirm like by sending one email right before the event takes place and hoping that, okay, that's gonna do enough. In fact, confirmation is the place where you should be the most aggressive and we'll talk about that because it's way easier easier to get someone who's already registered to show up than it is to get a new registrant. I should have put that as a golden tip. I'll have to remember that for next time when I do this again. But it's way easier to get someone who's already registered to show up than it is to get a new person to register. I just want that to land because it's really critical. And for the most part, no matter how long and how successful you are at events, you're always going to have attrition, which means people that register and don't show up for the event. And the better your confirmation process, the lower your attrition and the more likely you are to have success in your event over time. Like I can't tell you the amount of events I've done in my life with major speakers who had hundreds of people registered and then five people show up in the room because the confirmation process was broken. And so really important to think about as we're going through event process, but these are the stages. So let me break these down into really simple statements because this is really how it's gonna work. I actually have two for curiosity when I'm going through that, but curiosity is the phase of, I think I've heard something about that before. Like, oh, that uh, you're out there, event funnels are out there. Like we'll use that as the example, event funnels are out there. Wild Women and Wine is out there. I think I've heard about that before. Or even better, and this is the type of customer that you really want to attract or, or the type of lead you really want to attract, I'm actively looking for something like that. <laughs> so those are the two best statements that frame what is it like to be someone that's curious about what you do because they maybe heard about it, maybe, or they're looking for something like that. You typically don't want to try to attract people that aren't looking for your thing or that don't know anything at all about what you do. And in a best case scenario, you're attracting people who are like, man, I need that. I need wild women and wine. I need that weekend to decompress or do what I'm doing. So keep those statements in mind when you think about the beginning of an event registration or the beginning of an event journey. These are the two statements that wrap up that curiosity phase. So then there's discovery, which means, oh, you're doing that. Ken does that. Mary Francis does that. I'm interested in learning more about that specific thing. So now they realize that you exist. They understand, oh, from there, you know, I'm learning more about what you do. I'm learning more about who you are. I'm learning more about why I should be listening to you. Kind of like what I do at the beginning of every one of these episodes, because I realize that some of you might be in the discovery phase where you're stumbling upon this episode of Expert Momentum and you're going, oh, great, you do that. I'm interested in that. And so there's a whole phase and there's process that can be put around the discovery phase. 
Then there's negotiation, which this is, as I said, a, a place that often is too neglected in an event funnel or in an event process because people go, oh, I'm actually going to have to like go to an event training. Like even at the beginning of this, I kind of negotiated with you by saying you might watch some of this and go, oh, well, I want to know more about filling an event. And I negotiated with you. I said, great. Actually, I already did a training on that. I did an hour. You might want to watch that or you might want to watch the other two hours because when you do, you're going to be a lot more prepared for not only how you put your funnel together but how you understand like the whole process so there's a negotiation that makes you go oh well i'm actually gonna have to go and in general there's a decision point that's like oh well i'm not sure i want to do that because then you got to get them to the decision of going all right i'm actually going to show up or all right i'm actually going to watch that replay i'm actually going to do what you say now most people especially you know people who are new to a preview event or new to a webinar or new to anything that they're doing online they go great the person agreed to be there they're most definitely going to show up right wrong for the most part this phase is the most important phase of saying not only they they go great i'm going to be there now you're really making sure yes i'll definitely be there thanks for reminding me so in a great confirmation process especially if you're doing this in person like they have the address of the location they know what time the event starts they know what's going on at the event they've agreed that they understand why they want to be there and why it's important to them the confirmation process is critical and as I said earlier, just to reiterate for those of you who've jumped on since then, way easier to get somebody to show up that's already registered as opposed to finding new registrants. Finding new registrants can actually be fairly challenging if you haven't done it before. And so, again, if you don't didn't watch last week, I'm negotiating with you, go watch last week because I give you over 30 different ways that you can get people to show up to your event. And I know a lot of you want that content. And I know I'll cover it again. So if you're like, I don't want to watch that one, I want to be live and ask questions, I will definitely be doing that again at some point. So you'll be able to go through that process with me. So attendance, great, I'm here. And so you still want some process around that. Of There are many amazing things you can do with an event funnel or to create a great in-house experience that are directly related to an event funnel that make their in-person experience phenomenal with you. So, you know, great example of this, something that I've added, and I'll talk about this at, at, over the years at events. One of the biggest things that people say, like within the first five minutes of starting an event, or maybe you were thinking it as you were watching this, is like, hey, I want the slides. And if you were registered for the event, I normally like to have a process that sends you all of the event materials in advance or sends you the page where all the event materials are going to be or the recordings or the replays or all that stuff are going to be in advance so that you can go, oh yeah, now I don't have to think about that. Those pieces of process, those little touches that you put in or those little automations that you put in of here's where you go for all the resources and oh, by the way, it's already in your inbox or you've already received a text about it or I've already given you an opportunity to get those things, those can be huge huge factors in your success and what you're doing and then the post event which is really all about what am i supposed to do now so great i've done this event and some people will have committed to you know your next product your next program your coaching whatever it is that you do but the post event part of your funnel event funnel process is what am i supposed to do now so i'm going to go through those all again really quickly so that we have it all in order these are your phases you got curiosity discovery negotiation decision confirmation attendance post event so uh, curiosity is i think i've heard something about that or i'm looking for something like that then they go oh you're doing that i'm interested in learning more then they go oh well, i'm actually gonna have to do something like i'm gonna do some work or do an event or do a training then you get them to go okay i'll be there then you really make sure that they're gonna be there <laughs> then they show up which is great to your online or in-person event then they know very clearly what they're supposed to do. That is really the job of an event funnel, to make sure that all of those processes are buttoned up as well as they can be. And the more planned out and organized you are, especially when it comes to events, the better the experience will be because you want their experience when they're on the event to be as seamless and easy and non-frustrating as it can possibly be in what we're doing here. And the more that you can do that, the, the easier it is to make sure that people are gonna do what you'd like them to do, which is work with you, you know, get involved with your company,
company, buy a product, do whatever the next step is. Because again, our preview event or our first events are really people's first taste of us. And a lot of times that's where they're gonna make decisions on whether they're gonna work for us, work with us, sometimes for years, whether they're gonna buy our product, whether they're gonna be one of Mary Frances's wild women, which is what we'll work with today in the event funnel. But that really breaks it down into simple statements. Instead of saying, these are the phases, these are the conversations that you're gonna have with people. And the event funnel, again, at this point, what's really critical about it is you've got to map this experience. You've got to understand what that experience is first before you start building. So this does require some planning. It does require you to sit down and go, all right, what do I want this ideal experience to be like? And I know that Mary Frances, although I'm going to make up pieces of this, has a very strong idea of who she is and how she wants to work and what she wants to do. But obviously, she, you know, we're going to map that up and I'm going to make up some details or she can fill in some details but I know there's a delay so I don't want to wait too long in the mapping so I'll be making some stuff up but the secret is you've got to have you got to plan this out and one of the things I'm finding more and more especially in my agency where I do this stuff for people all day or I'm working with them all day is a lot of people are shying away from this work or they go oh man it's a lot of work like I don't know that I want to write those emails or I don't know that I want to get those things done but those little touches are the difference between companies that make six and seven figures US doing this or can or Canadian doing this and people that don't the fact that you even have a plan like you know if you're if you follow marketing gurus or you watch Facebook lives like this you probably heard of a guy named Ryan Dice who talked about doing it on a cocktail napkin I was watching a Frank Kern video yesterday you know they have one sheet of paper the map doesn't necessarily have to be as complex as the one we're putting together today or we're going to talk about today but you've got to have something that says Ideally, what happens to move them from that curiosity phase of they're looking for what I have and they don't know me all the way through, a map is gonna make this a heck of a lot easier. And then here's the thing, and this is another really important secret about why event funnels in particular are so important. It's so much harder to get people to actually show up to anything these days because there's so much going on, especially in the online space, like getting somebody to show up and stay for longer than two seconds on a Facebook Live or on a webinar, especially long form stuff. Like people tell you all the time, oh, people don't want the education. It's That's not necessarily true. It's that the demand for time and attention has gone up exponentially at this point it's everyone is trying to demand everyone's attention so where do you win because if the difference isn't talent like a great example of this is i was watching someone that is you know a specialist in opera they're an opera singer and the difference in talent is this big like you know especially if even if i'm comparing myself to other marketers you know the difference there there are young gun marketers who are probably more talented than i am or are the difference in our talent or our skill or experience is like this big so the difference in someone who comes to the event versus someone who doesn't or the difference between someone who comes to me versus going to someone else is those differences in process and understanding that funnel and that experience from beginning to end Funnel still makes the difference, whether you like it or not. Experience still makes the difference. So an event funnel, again, we're talking about those phases, we're talking about those experiences, and those touches make all the difference. Understanding like, do I have a confirmation sequence in there? Do I actually like pick up the phone and talk to people? Do I make sure that you know they know why they're coming and why it's important to them? That's what makes the difference between people that are really successful and people who aren't, is that consistency and that map, those two secrets. So let's talk about how to map a funnel. And I use a tool called Funnelytics for this. There are many tools. Again, there are cocktail napkins. There are whiteboards. It, you don't need a specific tool to do this. I use a tool right now that's called Funnelytics, which is the particular tool that I like to use for mapping funnels and for thinking about the customer experience and for thinking about process, which is what I'm going to use in today's session. You don't have to use this tool, but it's a free tool that you can use. For a long time, I used Lucidchart. You can use Google Drawings. You can use PowerPoint if that's what you have um, or Google's version. Google Drawings, doesn't matter how you map the funnel, but the idea is the ideal experience. And again, since it's a funnel, as much as possible, I like to work from the top down. So I'm going through my various phases of curiosity and interest and all that, and I like to work from the top down. But 
when I'm starting a funnel or when I'm starting this mapping process, what's really, really super important is I know what I want them to do at the end of the day. So the first thing that has to go on an event funnel map or on any funnel map for my point for, for that point is what is the end goal? What is the end destination? What do, what at the end of the day do you want the person to do? And that not if it, if the event is the end of the road and working with your business that might be the case. But for most of you, the event is not the end of the road. You're, especially since we're talking about preview events or your first events in this, that's not the last thing that you want them to do. You have something that sits at the end, whether it's a coaching program or a mastermind. In Mary Frances's case, since I'm using uh, the Wild Women and Wine, which I have a little familiar a little familiarity with. But I'm just going to make stuff up for this process, as I said. You, Mary Francis, this may not be super accurate to your business, but I want to use it as an example. And in this case, I'm going to say your end goal in here is that you really want someone to work with you one-on-one -on -one or in a small group. So what I'm going to do is obviously, if I'm going to do that, so with Funnelytics here, the tool that, I'm, that I have on the screen, and I'm watching my comments if you want to put something specific in here that you want me to discuss with this, but Funnelytics breaks things down into a couple of different sources. You have you have order called pages that you can drag out here. You have traffic sources, which I'm gonna get to in a second here. You have offline, which again, this is basically just traffic in a different point of view. And then you have templates, which if you've used this before, you can design entire templates. But basically, I treat these pages or these resources as goals in the project as where we're driving people or where we're trying to get them to go. Perfect. So she, she has what's called the one year wild woman's journey. So at the end of the day, the perfect customer experience ends with Mary Francis. And I'm going to put, I'm going to use sales page for that, where they go to a page and this could be an order form in person. And at that point, they're going to order the one year and hold on. I got to move my cable around a little bit because it's blocking my keyboard. So I need to be able to type, which is always exciting. So one year, let me just make sure I still have sound too because I'm wondering if that's what happened before. All right, no, I'm good. I'm good on sound, just making sure. So we're gonna call this the one year wild women's journey. So that's what's gonna sit at the end of this event funnel, which is really what we want them to do. And I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna make up a price point and this may not be accurate. You can put in your real one, but we'll say that at the end of the day, the, the person I'm looking for is someone that's gonna spend $5,000 or $10,000 or, or $200, doesn't matter what your price point is in this, but this is what we want them to do. So that's the end goal. So I wanna have that on the sheet because, and I'm zooming out of this a little bit because this is where we're taking them. So at the end of the day, any map we draw, any process we draw, any experience that we create, we want to make sure that we know where we're taking them to. If there aren't an arrow or there isn't an arrow that ends here, we know that we have a problem. We know that something's wrong right here. So now I'm going to go up to the top. So I know this is here and I'm com comfortable and confident that this is here. So now I'm going to move to the top and I'm going back to that slide that I showed earlier, which basically says there are only three ways and I'm actually just going to put the text on the page. There's promote which I'm gonna put on here. So we know there's a promote category. We know that there's, um, I don't necessarily love how they do that. There's a pay category and there's, a, whoops, and there's a partner category. So I'm just gonna put those in here so that I have them for my reference, which basically says, all right, I know that I'm gonna have categories. So now I'm going back to the top, which says, all right, now I'm going back to that curiosity phase. And I'm saying, all right, where am I finding people that are curious? And so this is when we start bringing in, how do people find out that you even exist and that you're even a person and that you do what you do? So a lot of those most common ways are in here, as you'll see already is elements. And I know that you do some of these things already. So I'm gonna drag out some sources, some of which based on what I know and some of which, which may not be super accurate. So I know you promote yourself and I hate when they do the arrows like that, which I'll draw my own arrows, thank you very much. But, so I'm gonna call this your Facebook page. Whoops, now I'm in all caps. I'm gonna say you have a Facebook page where you promote, whoops. I'm gonna say that you have a Facebook group where you promote as well. 
So I'm using these as examples. So these are things that you, areas where you already have some people gathered that you have here and that you are directly promoting to get people into your event. And then I'm also gonna say, so promotion, I wanna put, so a lot of times, as I mentioned, you should be doing at least one of these things. One of the areas that immediately when I get into mapping with people these days is that I see way too many people are super over leveraged on Facebook, where like I'll draw these Facebook bubbles and I'll have 97 Facebook bubbles. You wanna make sure that if you're noticing already on your map at the beginning that you're over leveraged in one area, like there's just too much Facebook, that should get you thinking like, oh, I better promote in some other areas. So one of the ways I like to distinguish when I'm doing a funnel like this or I'm creating a process like this is I wanna make sure under each one of these categories, promote, pay, and partner, that I have a mix of things that are you know, digital marketing or online marketing, as well as some things that are you know, offline or traditional marketing, you know, networking, those types of things. Some experts will tell you, oh, you don't need to have that. And that you could have all the success in the world just doing you know, pay and just doing Facebook ads, which I might put in here and I teach how to do that. But over time, over the long run, over a business that's gonna last five, 10, 15, 20 years, you will do different things at different times. There will be a mix of digital marketing and in-person marketing just as there will be you know in your experience it's really important to have some diversity so i'm going to throw out some you know i'm just going to put this meeting right here and i'm just going to call this little guy networking and just say you know you're out doing some networking groups okay and then i'm going to have that in here and then i might you know they have text messages or or business cards text messages i just had some success with this we'll just put text messages and we'll say that you know you send some texts out to some friends or some some people that you have in here. So you already noticed that as you can see, the bottom is simple, the top is a bit more complex, especially the curiosity phase. Cuz we know in this promotion phase right here, we've got a variety of different things going on. So let's talk some more about traffic. And let's say on the pay side, which means I'm paying or I'm doing advertising or I'm trying to get, you know, I'm trying to pay to get in front of eyeballs. I'll throw out, you know, we'll use Facebook ads as an example here. And again, I know that we'll just say Facebook ads. So I'm paying for some Facebook ads to get some exposure. And then we'll use, um, you know, we'll say that we're, we're paying for some YouTube ads as well. There's also direct mail and there's some other things we got on here, but we'll just use an example. Like we're gonna make a video and we're gonna do some ads and you know we'll we'll put them on youtube as well which again great idea these days especially not to be totally over leveraged in facebook although facebook is great you don't want to necessarily be over leveraged in that then let's use some partners so let's say great i ha and i love to use this affiliate program bubble for all these things but we'll say you know i'm gonna do interviews you know with some people that have shows or things like that or I'm going to have, you know, affiliate program is what they have in here, you know, um, ask friends or family to invite people. And again, if you wanna know more about how to fill in these bubbles, again, negotiating with you, go back to last week and watch, cause again, I gave you 30 different bubbles that could be sitting up here of ways to get people in, but I'm trying to keep this at least somewhat simple because this is where most people fall down. So now you notice what's going on here on our map is that we have, the beginning here where we have all these different things that are going on and we have the end. So obviously our puzzle here or our funnel here is to make sure that we have experiences that go from you know here where they're learning about you, that curiosity phase, all the way down to here. Now, most people <laughs> fall down. This is where most funnels go wrong is most people try to develop all this hole first as opposed to realizing the most important thing that you're doing is this. So obviously the most important thing that you're doing is making sure that you're consistent in these areas that you have here, that you're consistent in your promotion, consistent in you know paying and consistent in partnering. For those of you that don't have a budget, this is another place where people are like, well, I can't pay right now. So for right now, yeah, you might be like this funnel is where you're heavily over leveraged in promotion for now, but you wanna keep these things in mind because as you get some success or you make some sales or you're talking to more people, you wanna make sure that these two become part of what you're doing.
And this is a lot, this says a lot about a mature speaking and expert company versus one that's not as mature. I can tell when I start building out this map with somebody, how, you know, normally how much they're making as well as how mature they are in business. Because if it's all promotion, in general, I know that that's really hard to scale or to grow over time. Whereas businesses that are more sophisticated or that are more easily able to scale tend to have a healthy amount of these two things. Or they may just, you know, I know some businesses that once they hit a certain point, they hit that six figure US mark or whatever, that they may, the majority of what they do might be through partnership or through what they're doing here. So obviously some people try to get too meticulous about developing all this stuff first and thinking I have to get all this perfect first, which is a lot of work and not necessarily a guarantee of success. But, you know, in this case, we have to have a working theory. We have to have a working map that's gonna get people going. The other place, which is a common area where people fall down is they put all these things in place. So you do all this work, you start spending money, you start running ads, you start going to groups, you start doing whatever, and you don't watch what's happening with these things. <laughs> so you might go, oh, well, I did 10 networking events last month. And I'll go, great, which one of the networking groups was the most successful for you in getting registrants for your webinar, registrants for your event? And they'll go, oh, I, I don't know because they're not tracking whether or not, you know, they're even having success in these areas. So. I'll talk a lot more about that in future sessions, but keep in mind, you know, this is real business. This is real life. I know a lot of us doing these maps, like it kind of takes us out and goes, oh, well, now I don't have to do the work or now I don't have to, you know, organize these things or do this part of the process. You definitely have to make sure that you are seeing at the curiosity phase, like is what you're doing even working or is what you're doing successful for what you're doing? Or are there ways to change things up or try different things or, you know, measure what you're doing at this phase? And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on analysis or analytics on this, but just giving that out because again, people ask where are the common mistakes? The most common mistakes are they don't know this, where they're taking people and or that doesn't exist on their funnel map or up here, they're not diverse enough that, or they, they're just not doing anything up here. They build a really good process, which that's my problem. I do that often for myself where I build a really, really good process and then I go, oh wait, I need to do all these things, <laughs> which is again, what I covered for a full hour last week and I'll cover a lot more going forward. So then, you have to ask yourself, so we said curiosity. So from here, there has to be something to discover. There has to be something that's sitting at the next phase that goes, all right, when I'm curious and I'm prowling around on Facebook or I'm going to a networking group or I get your text, what is it that you want them to do? So in this case, obviously the most common thing that you'll hear, you'll hear this on a zillion marketing things, and this is true for an event process as well, is you gotta have something free to give them, or you gotta have a gift to give them, or you have to have some content that you give them. There are many, many different ways to be successful with things that attract to an event, but in general, and this is another reason why I like to have this in mind, that I normally will use things that just make sense in the context of the event. So if my event in this case, which you said is a wild woman's journey is, you know, you've got to have some sort of gift or some sort of freebie at this point that's calling out to those wild women and that's helpful to them in some way or interesting to them in some way or, you know, addresses something that's going on directly with them. So a freebie. So I know in this case, Mary Frances has a show, so I'm going to use that as her as her freebie, her Wild Women and Wine show. I'm going to use that as what she drives people to. So the discovery phase, how people discover what she's doing, and this I know is a Facebook show, but she's getting better about putting this in other places, is I'm going to call this Wild Women and Wine show. So this is where discovery happens. So all of these roads lead to here. So you'll notice I'm going to link these I'm gonna draw lots of little arrows and this, I don't care if this is messy, but I'm gonna show the example of, all right, this is where people are going. But even as I draw this, one thing you'll notice is when this starts to get, whoops, when this starts to get super messy here and we realize that, all right, you know, going from here to this, 
you know, I'll draw this out and I'll stretch it out. You'll see how this gets messy. It also gives you an idea that over time, in general, at this discovery level, you'll normally have a couple of different things that are going on at this point. You normally don't want to have just one thing that you're depending on in the discovery phase. And now, the good thing about a show, for example, like this, is this could be broken down into episodes of the show. You might realize over time that there are certain episodes of what you do or certain episodes of the show that are you know performing super well and so with a show where you're doing something every week that's a new opportunity every single week that you can measure so theoretically each one of those could have a button in here or each episode could have a button in here that you're using for discovery so this right now i'm just representing as one thing to try to keep it kind of simple for this example but in your model there might be multiple episodes of the show or multiple gifts that you know are really getting them here so now they're in the discovery phase with you in this process and so i'm going to go back and i want to be going back and forth between this so let's pull this up so now Obviously, at this point, there's there's some discovery going on. And so this is when we start getting into the process of when they watch the show or on the show, what happens? Or how do you get them to watch more shows? This depends on which process makes the more sense for what you're doing. Because obviously, you want them to watch the show and you have you know things that you do on the show that encourage them to take a next step. So I'm gonna, I know in here you have some opt-ins, but in general, the first thing that's gonna happen from a show like this or something like this is trying to get them to give you their contact information. So I'm just gonna throw an opt-in in here. All right, so in general, some sort of freebie. So in your case, this might be previous episodes of the show. This might be gifts that guests shared on the show. This might be something specific to what you're talking about on the show and doing on the show. But in general, what we're trying to do is move them from communicating with us here and then discovering us here to capturing some information from them. So we're trying to get names, phone numbers, emails, move them into something that's a more controlled environment where we can start to put the process in. So here's one thing that's important to know. This area up here where I'm highlighting is harder to automate than once they come into our world. When we've captured a phone number, we've captured an email, we've captured whatever happens here. This part is where a lot more of the automation and a lot more of the decision making can start to happen in here. So, but in this case, there are automation tools that exist for, you know, Facebook and for social media and for these things that can help you here. But really, if you're going to be building out a map and you're going to be focusing on where can you automate or where can you have the biggest impact, what is going to matter most for those of you that are new is what happens once they get in here. So I'm just going to use an example where we say gifts from the show. And again, you can make this more specific when you're doing it for yourself, however it is, but there's going to be some sort of gift that they want that we talk about on the show at this point that, you know, we're going to get them to join our email list. So now there's going to be a next phase after this. And generally from here, the question mark is, and this is de dependent on your process, are we taking them direct to our preview event, to our first event from here? Or are we asking them to buy something? What are we asking them to do? So since I'm going to keep it simple, because um, obviously we only have an hour on the show, and I want to demonstrate a simple model, and we can get way more complex on future episodes of this, I'm going to say that from here, we're going to try to get them to buy a ticket or get a ticket to your event. So we're going to say preview event it sits here. All right. Now notice... This loves to draw this nice little assumption here <laughs> that says, all right, they're just going to very cleanly go from gifts from the show to the event. And this is why I like to break it down in phases. But in reality, that is not typically how it works. And so I'm going to show how, what really happens here. So obviously, you've got to have some efforts that take them from, all right, great, They've opted in for those gifts now to make sure, and this is kind of that negotiation phase I was talking about now, of, all right, now that you've got these gifts, first of all, I want to make sure you look at them. Second of all, I want to make sure that you know that this event is coming up. But there's got to be some diversity in here, and there has to be something that happens if they don't take this offer or they don't move into this next step. So again, same thing is happening here. So I'm going to put some examples. So let's do, let's use the email. So you might start sending them, emails from here so we'll say 
you know, emails, whoops, that encourage them to take gift and register for event. So we want that here. I know that's a really long way of doing it. We might also say, all right, that we want to have some Facebook messages that that we send that say, great, I noticed that you took my gift and, you know, so we'll just say the same thing, messages to take gift and register for event. So again, you can break this down as far as you want and you can even use promote partner pay in here as much as you can. We can even have, you know, ads in here. Or a lot of people will put a group in here that says, all right, Facebook ads, you know, or retargeting ads we'll put in here. And I'll talk about that a lot more on future episodes that are in here. And so really what I wanna do, and I like to do it this way, where I say, all right, ideally they'll go from, you know, and I'm just gonna draw to the one in the middle. You can have multiple arrows or do however you want like this. But ideally these are the things that are gonna take them here. La, 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 la. But let's assume, you know, there's also going to be some people, despite our best efforts, that do all of these things that aren't going to go where we want them to go. So I always put something off to the side, you know, and this is how your funnels get huge over time that says, all right, they didn't do it. So I'm going to put them in, you know, we'll just call this newsletter or updates sequence. So after all these, if they don't go to the event, they might end up over here. So again, notice that we're mapping out the experience that says, all right, they find out about us here, they watch the show, from the show, the hope is they take some gifts from the show. If they don't go to the next place through our efforts to get to the preview event, then we have something for them. And theoretically, this could take them into another offer or into somewhere else that they wanna go. But from here, there's the preview event. You know, and so these things are really the confirmation part of the process, which makes sure that we are confirming, hey, they get through to our preview event. Then after that, as I mentioned, so let's look at the screen again. I'm gonna pull up my PowerPoint again real quick. So we had the negotiation, the decision phase. So the decision, as I mentioned, is happening at that preview event. Then there's the confirmation at this point. So. We can even do it this way where we say it'd probably be better to do it like this, where we say registered for preview event. And then we'll say, we'll add a confirmation sequence in here. And again, this could be diverse as well. And we'll call this event confirmation. Whoops, I added in all caps. Okay, and then we might also have, you know, some messages or some texts or something in here as well that we send and I'll, you know, I'm gonna do that. We'll put text message in here too, because I wanna have two ways to determine, did they confirm for the event? And this is really critical to say like what's happening here. And then they attend the event. So I'm just gonna put, I'll use our meeting guy again, and we'll say event, preview event. And this could be online, offline, doesn't matter what we have here. But notice again what I'm doing here. This is forcing me to think about these various phases of the process, which really say, all right, how am I making sure that they're going from step A up here where they discover me to this show, to what I'm doing? What happens if they don't do this? How are they going through this process? And you'll notice over time, this is the this represents the work a lot of you are already doing in your promotion phase or to get people doing what you're doing. And then obviously from your preview event, that's where they're buying this. Or if they don't buy this, there's probably a preview sequence that sits in here. I'm gonna draw my arrow a different way. Hey, we'll call this, hey, you didn't buy sequence. <laughs> and then we'll say, great. Whoops, I didn't draw my arrow right. So when we're creating an event funnel again, notice that we're covering each of those bases that I talked about over here. I'm gonna show it on the screen again. The curiosity, the discovery, the negotiation, the decision, confirmation, did they attend, and the post event. And so obviously from here, you'll have, hey, you didn't buy, but you'll also have this circular sequence that sits here that says, hey, you didn't attend. <laughs> Let's call it hey, you didn't show up. 
And so that is a sequence to maybe get them to register for the next event or, you know, potentially to get them interested in this. So we'll do this. I'll clone this guy and we'll just put this over here. So I know for a lot of you, when you see something like this, when you see an event funnel like this, this looks really daunting and you start going, all right, like from here, this should be making sense to you, but a lot of you might have some questions. And this is why Expert Momentum is a weekly show. This is why this is what I do for a living and I've been doing it for 11 years. But in a perfect model, we're covering those phases that I talked about here and we're starting to develop a process that looks a whole heck of a lot like this. I'm making sure that I check in what I have here for those of you who are watching this. But this is typically saying, how do we make sure that we're gonna be successful? How do we know for sure that people are gonna start showing up to what we're doing? How do we know whether or not you know we're gonna have some success in that regard? And it's really important to understand that obviously that's the goal here. That's what we want to happen. That's how we guarantee our success by understanding that we're gonna have that type of process in place that makes sure that these things are happening. And once we've got this, the ideal from that point is to say we have to commit to it at this point. We have to commit to these things for a certain period of time. The other mistake that happens in here so frequently is people will give up on these things way too fast. They'll say, oh, I was doing my Facebook page for a week and it didn't get events, it didn't get me registrations or people to my show right away, or this didn't get people direct to my event right away. So it doesn't work. And this is this is often when I hear people say stuff like funnels didn't work. That in general is where the breakdown is happening. There's not enough time allowed in your model. There's not enough consistency in the decisions that you're making on these different things that you have. I love what Mary Frances says. Love this. Wow. Thank you. This is exactly what I need right now. Great. This is exactly why I was bringing this up in this process because this is a fairly simple one and over time what starts to happen is where does how do we know that this is successful or why do we know that we need this kind of thing because if you're going to have a speaking business and if you're going to be successful a map like this needs to exist somewhere in your business it has to exist somewhere in here because over time, success or failure determines in how we start measuring our success in these areas. Because really, the, the hard work is not building this map out, is not necessarily doing these things. The hard work is to say, great, now that we've committed to these things and we're starting to do these things, how successful are we? Where are the breakdowns happening? The most important thing is not how we create this map, it's how we adjust this map. It's how we adjust this funnel and measure this funnel and see if we're successful so that we can say, great, the majority of people that watch my show come from my Facebook page, so I'm gonna devote more time and energy to it. Or I don't have, none of these are working, I need to try some more pay or I need to try some more partner. Or I might find that all of these are getting lots of viewers to my show or registrants to my show, but people aren't going from here to here and that's where they're breaking down. So as you can see, the art of this is in where do the breakdowns happen? Obviously, all of us as marketers and trainers and people are trying to sell you the perfect system or trying to say like, this is the perfect funnel. But just like we did today, what's so important about this and how you can take and use this lesson for today is as you start to develop this, share this with me. So draw this out. I don't care if you take a picture of your cocktail napkin or you use your whiteboard process, but this is what has to start happening in order for you to develop and automate. Because the best news about this is for the most part, Everything that exists beyond this point that exists down here can be automated. So we can automate pieces of this process that allow us, and I'm gonna save this funnel real quick because we might wanna play with it again on future lessons or whatever we've got here. So this gives us an idea of where do the breakdowns happen. Each one of these arrows right here represents a measurement. Each one of these things represents something that we're doing. And then from here, the goal would be that each one of these things represents a process, an automated process that we have in place that's moving them from one place to the next place and what we've got here. So this is where event funnels start. You gotta have those seven phases that I showed again. The curiosity phase, which is happening here. The discovery phase, which is what's happening here. They're discovering you and what you're doing the gift phase or the negotiation phase. So obviously you're starting to get negotiation in here of what do you want, what do you like? Then obviously the decision phase of they've decided to come and that's sending them into our confirmation phase right here. And then this is they've actually shown up 
to the thing. Well, actually, they've registered here. Then we've got them in the confirmation phase. I drew it out more complex even just to show that there's a difference in these phases. So again, curiosity, discovery, negotiation is happening at this point. Decision is happening through here. Confirmation is happening here. They attend. And then what happens afterwards. So that is what the map looks like for your ideal event. Now I know again, when I do these types of lessons, which are pretty technical, and we go into a lot of detail like this, where we have this map and what we have, a lot of you are going to have questions. And again, as we mentioned, this is a weekly show. That's why I do this every week. As you're doing this process, your homework to take away from this is start working on your map. Start thinking about how do I put these tools together? And I have a fantastic download for those of you that missed two weeks ago. If you want to get my organizer for these things, now you're like, why was that organizer so long? Why was it an ebook? Why was it all of that? This is why, because the goal is to take that organizer that I showed you uh, two weeks ago and turn it into this. And once you've got that and you're measuring it and you're consistent in what you're doing here, this is really, you could just take these first few lessons of expert momentum that we did, these first few shows, and turn it into a successful business. This is the model. I've actually given it to you all up front. This is the model that people use. And of course, you've got to perform at your event. Your marketing needs to work. Your efforts need to work. There's lots of nuts and bolts in place that have to be successful. But what I've shown you over the past few weeks is really how you have success in organizing your event and pulling it off and knowing what to say and having the right systems and process in place. This is it. And so the good news is going forward, I would love to review what you have. I'd love to answer your questions. I'd love to understand what's confusing to you about this process and how this all gets put together. And I wanna spend you know full episodes in the future where we break these things down. And again, this is what I do, as you can see from me putting this together, a large part of this process is what I do when I work with clients every single day. This is showing off like this is the beginning of a process of developing these things, writing these sequences. Julia, I'm sorry, I'm exploding your head again. Becky, I haven't seen Becky in a while. Glad you're here. If you got you got here late, go back and watch where I started this drawing process. But again, I hope that this was a valuable session for you. I hope you got a lot out of this. I know there will be questions and I'll be addressing them every Tuesday on Expert Momentum, and I'll be answering the comments. So leave a comment, leave a question. Let me know what's confusing to you, what you want to know, how you want to know it. And I will be back next Tuesday with another topic related to this or anything else I can do to help you out in being a successful speaker, successful expert, having the business you want, making money doing it, having the systems you need in place. All that good stuff is what we'll be covering on Expert Momentum. We'll see you next week.